The Cheatham Cricket Club in Manchester had played cricket at its suburban oval since the 1860s. The grounds were surrounded by a seven foot high fence and as Manchester grew, suburban life began to grow around the oval. By 1910, there were houses just across the road. Obviously, part of the game of cricket involves the batsmen hitting the ball right out of the oval if they can. Five or six times in the 20th century, batsmen at Cheatham hit the ball so hard that it cleared the outermost fence and ended up in the neighbour's yards. One day in 1947, the plaintiff, Miss Stone, was standing on the road outside her house when a batsman hit a prodigious shot which cleared the fence, travelling nearly 100 yards or 91 metres, clearing the road and striking poor Miss Stone. She sued the cricket club for negligence and the case ended up in the House of Lords. Now, there was no dispute about the fact that it was reasonably foreseeable that from time to time cricket balls might be hit out of the grounds. And negligence law says that a person must do what is reasonably practicable to prevent harm coming to others. And so Miss Stone argued that seeing as people lived adjacent to the cricket ground and seeing as balls were hit out from time to time, the cricket club was under an obligation to prevent people coming to harm. The thing is, of course, that in 90 years of cricket at that ground, nobody outside the ground had been struck by a ball. The prospect of balls being hit out of the ground was reasonably high, but the prospect of a ball striking a person after being hit out of the ground was really remote. As a result, the cricket club was justified in doing nothing to mitigate such a remote risk. Lord Radcliffe put it this way, It seems to me that a reasonable man, taking account of the chances against an accident happening, would not have felt himself called upon either to abandon the use of the ground for cricket or to increase the height of his surrounding fences. He would have done what the appellants did. In other words, he would have done nothing. So if the likelihood of harm is sufficiently remote, any nominal duty in negligence might not require any response at all.